Hey everyone, Blaze here, welcome to the second uh, December anime pickups video, so yeah, let's get straight into it, because December was a while ago now. <laughs> uh, first up we got uh, Pat Labour, the movie Free, The Waste of Thirteen. Uh, I got this one for my birthday actually, I just forgot to uh, show it in the uh, birthday haul, but yeah, I watched this on my birthday as well for the first time, this was the last uh, thing in the Pat Labour universe that I hadn't seen, have now obviously. I think it came out like in 2001, so there was a little bit of a gap between this one and the uh, previous Pat Labour 2 film, which came out in like 1993 or whatever. So, uh, this is the first in the movie timeline for Pat Labour that wasn't directed by Mamori Yoshi. Um, not that you can really tell, honestly. It's pretty similar in style and tone to the second film. And again, I have sort of the same criticisms I had for the second film. While it's, again, a really good film. Maybe not quite as good as the second one, but still a really, really good film. In terms of thriller, great sci-fi, a great story. It's still not really a Pat Labour film. Like, it doesn't it doesn't concentrate on Special Vehicle Unit 2. They're in it for, like, all the five minutes <laughs> to save the day towards the end. And that's pretty much all they do. There's even a weird cameo about halfway through, if you can even call it a cameo, where they're literally in the background for about 10 seconds, and then you don't see them again until the end of the film. It's really quite bizarre in that way, but uh, instead it, just, uh, it stars these two detectives that are uh, looking at a crime. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're trying to solve this crime that basically is taking down robots, like the Pat Labors, around uh, the city, and... Eventually, they discover that a secret, like, biological g project, like, government project, I think they, it says on the back, secret biological weapons project called uh, Wasted 13. So, and, uh, I don't really, uh, it's a monster movie, basically, <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there, it's a kaiju film, like, Maybe not to the same extent of a, like a proper kaiju film, but it certainly has that sort of thing going on. It's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, the story's really good. The ending is pretty touching. Yeah, overall, it's just it's a solid entry. I can kind of see why people say it's the worst of the films. I probably agree with that, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just maybe not the best. Um, yeah, there's Pat Labor, the Pat Labor Free Waste of 13. Spine. And the back. And there's one thing on here I haven't watched yet, which is the uh, Mini Parto shorts, which I really need to watch because they're the last uh, Pat Labor animated things that I have not seen. But as a result of picking or getting receiving that film as a gift from my mum for my birthday, I now have the complete Pat Labor franchise, which is awesome. All on Blu ray from Made in Japan. It's so, so awesome to have all of this. Really, really love this franchise. This was the first time I'd ever seen Pat Labor stuff was when I started getting these. And yeah, I really, really love it. My favourite part is probably the TV series version. Because even though it doesn't have like the similar animation budget, like it's not quite as spectacular... Spectac I can't even say that word. Spectacular <laughs> to watch. Um... Uh, yeah, it's still... It has like the heart and the soul of what this show is about to me personally. Which is Special Vehicle Unit 2 and Noah and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I just like it. There's a lot more of this as well. But, yeah, I like this probably the most. And this, the absolute most, the OVA stuff. Which is just a slice of life side story stuff. Which, uh, yeah, once you've come to love the characters so much, this was really amazing. So, yeah, that's my favourite part. But if I was going to recommend anyone get into this franchise, I would probably say, just like everybody else, you should probably check out the early days OVA. It's some of the best animation the franchise has to offer. It really represents the characters. It also represents the um, style and tone of the series, where it can get quite uh, for that, like this. I say this in a positive way, but slow. You know, it's not like really uh, over the top. So yeah, I would recommend watching that. But my favorite part is this. If you want to get into the franchise, probably start here. That's where I started. Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so that's uh, that. Uh, the next thing I have is a Naruto Shippuden box set 21. Um, I don't actually have box set 17 through 20. Uh, the only reason I picked this up because it was cheap on eBay and here in the UK. And it's still brand new and sealed and stuff. It's basically how I've been picking up these volumes because 
collecting a long running show like this is super expensive. Uh, so uh, a couple of years ago, I think it is now, yeah, wow, almost two years ago, uh, I picked up a lot of Bleach and Naruto really, really cheap. And uh, from there on, it's kind of been one of those things where I don't really want to pay full price for any of these volumes. <laughs> I'm quite happily just picking them up on cheap where where and when I can get them. So, yeah. I won't open this right now because I say it's still sealed. So I'll just show you the spine in the back. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, next up, we've got another Viz Media thing. This is Tiger and Bunny, The Beginning. Uh, I watched the TV series last year, really liked it, I think it's a really good like superhero type show, it's very western uh, influenced in terms of like comics, like the western hemisphere <laughs> influence in terms of like comic books and stuff, it's very like an American, you could kind of see like this being like a DC show, it still has like anime traits in it, as you can still tell it's made by a Japanese company or whatever, but uh, yeah, it still uh, has like that. Marvel, DC um, uh, stuff going on in it, and uh, yeah, it was it was okay. So I decided to definitely, obviously, see the rest of it. Which is this is actually just a retelling of the TV series. The reason I picked this up though is because the second film is a sequel to the TV series. So I figured by the time I get that second film, uh, I'll probably need a quick refresh on the TV series. So picked up the the beginning, which is going to be just that. I think it runs at only about, it's only 92 minutes, I don't know how much of the TV series it tells, if it just tells the last part or the whole thing in a really quick truncated version, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, for 92 minutes for a TV series that's 10 hours long, that's quite the, <laughs> that's quite the edit job they've got to do, so, anyway, so I don't know how good this film will actually be, probably not that great, I'm guessing, just because of you know, how short it is, and how much it's got to cram into that time frame, but I figured I'd get it anyway. Got some Blu-ray and DVD, I believe. Oh no, Blu-ray and special features, wow. Is there like a crap ton? Well, there is a crap ton of special features. Although nothing too amazing by the looks of it. Anyway, whatever. So that's that. Um, next we have, yes. Macross 2 the movie edition and also Macross Plus the movie edition. Um, I do already have Macross Plus volumes 1 through 2 that contain all 4 episodes but I decided to uh, pick up this as well just because I saw it going for like 99p on eBay and at that point I was like yeah why not. <laughs> so I picked that up as well but this is the main one I picked up Macross 2 the movie. I wanted to pick this up because I wanted to get it while it's still around. Well, you, you know, you can still get it, because this is probably never going to get relicensed thanks to the Harmony Gold stuff. We can always hope, we can always dream, but, you know, this is probably never going to happen. We were fortunate enough to even get this, like, Harmony Gold slipped up in Manga Entertainment back in the early 90s. We were able to license both Macross Plus and Macross 2, the movie. Although, legitimately, this is like, this is totally, like, everyone should be allowed to get anything that isn't the original series of Macross, but Harmony Gold will fight you on that, but they're wrong anyway. But, yeah, so I decided to pick this up just because I wanted to get it while it was still available. Like I said, like, I don't want to pay, pay uh, collector's prices for it. Plus, I also want to watch it, obviously, because I really like the uh, original series. I've never seen um, Robotech. Uh, the first time I ever saw Macross was pure, unadulterated Macross, <laughs> which I'm happy about. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to see this. But, at the same time, this isn't pure, unadulterated Macross, unfortunately. This is actually... I believe the original version of this, Macross 2, is a six episode OVA. And I believe the only time that's ever been released in English in its entirety was on VHS. There was like no DVD edition in English in the world, I don't think, that uh, has Macross 2 in its uncut form. So yeah, this is a movie cut. It runs at about almost three hours, so it must be pretty close to um, how the... Uh, uh, six episodes were because I imagine they were probably about half an hour each. So I don't, I honestly don't know like if this is pretty much uncut anyway and just maybe takes out the opening and endings. I don't know, but yeah, happy to have it. Looking forward to watching it. It's set like eighty years in the future, so it's not like a proper sequel to Macross. It's just kind of set in the same universe. But yeah, I like Macross a lot, so I'm looking forward to watching this at some point. Got spine. 
back. But yeah, put out by Manga Entertainment a long time ago. It's not going to get a reprint. <laughs> so, wanted to get it, like I said, while it's still for prices that are sensible. And then obviously, Macross Plus, the movie edition. This actually does have a Inga subtitled supported uh, Blu ray in Japan. I'd like to get that, but it's like a hundred plus pounds. So, and for, I don't know, for now, I'll just stick with the DVDs. It kind of bothers me that in Japan, not more Macross stuff got English subtitles. I know, like, in the case of at least uh, Macross Plus, obviously, it had, like, an English script that they could just do. And the, the movie edition is, like, native to Japan. It's not, like, an American construction, right? In Japan, they did the volumes, and they did a movie edition. So when the Blu-ray came out, they just took the English subtitles and dubbed and put them on the uh, Blu-rays, so there was no new script that needed to be written, I don't believe. But still, it would have been cool just to get stuff, like, especially, like, for for example, the Blu-ray of the original Macross series in Japan, like, that would have been awesome if that had English subtitles on it. I'm sure they would have got a significant amount of uh, people importing that from, like, America. Like, it, it was totally in their interest, I think, to do that. The same for Do You Remember Love, which is also getting re reprinted. That's never come out properly in English uh, in America, but I don't understand why Japan, that, that's one movie. Just subtitle the freaking movie into English, and I can guarantee you'll probably get at least a 5% jump up in sales on that. And even though like, they're redoing it, like another version from the ground up in um, Japan, like another release, and they still haven't supported it with English subtitles, that's just oh, so annoying. <laughs> anyway, um, are we on the final thing? I think we are. Yeah, we are. Okay, so the final thing is, it's pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> as you uh, probably know, I used to be really into art boxes for anime, but sold a lot of them off because they took up too much space. I still have a nice, a huge, relatively huge amount of them, but it's nowhere near what I had before. But anyway, I have bought an art box set for the first time in like two years or something, probably. I mean, I've been buying collector's editions, which are, you could consider art box sets, but this is a good old-fashioned art box set with uh, three volumes inside of it, it's actually six. Anyway, what is it? I picked up Ghost Slayer's Ayashi in the art box. This has an Anime Legends release, which is relatively easy to still get a hold of, but I have always loved the look of this art box. I don't know if I'll regret this purchase. I sort of... I'm not regretting it, because I really like having it, but I actually don't have anywhere to put it right now. But, um, yeah. It just, I've always loved the look of this set. It's like a, I think it's meant to mimic a shrine. I could be wrong, it could be some other Japanese building type thing that it's uh, mimicking, but it kind of looks like a shrine to me. It's also embossed here on the back, you can't, probably can't, can't catch the light on it, but yeah, this ladder's embossed. Um... But yeah, uh, I almost broke this when I first received it, because uh, you have to open it from the uh, bottom. I thought this I thought this was all solid, and you always had to open it from the top here. So I was like pulling and pulling and pulling, and I suddenly realised, no, what am I doing? <laughs> like, this is clearly not how it's meant to open. But yeah, it opens from the bottom, and everything tends to always fall out. Oh, we're okay. Because it kind of just sits in this little thing that doesn't really grab a hold of it and uh, anyway so yeah on the inside we have a book nice little guide or whatever and uh, this was put out by Bandai back in the day it's dubbed and um, oh god there it all goes <laughs> it's dubbed it stars uh, Stephen J Bloom who's like one of my favorite voice actors in English so yeah so it's volume one and volume two these ones don't come with a slip cover uh, that the rest of them do. They, they basically released them in the same style they did for Code Geass, uh, the Lucia Rebellion in America, where at least for the first season, where uh, each volume came out with two volumes inside, basically. It was three parts with uh, two volumes, whatever. So yeah, this is the second one. Get it out. We've got the covers and stuff. I won't go full on here. <laughs> like showing the discs and absolutely everything because it's going to take take up too much time. And then finally, volume three. I had to buy volume part three separately. When I bought this, it came with parts one and two in the art box, but I was able to find volume three for about ten pounds, which is not too bad. It was enough to 
obviously complete the set. And overall, it's kind of cost me a little bit, only a little bit more than what it would cost me to get the Anime Legends set. So, yeah, I actually haven't opened these properly yet, so <laughs> I'm going to pull them apart. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we've got the disc art. Very nice art on the uh, volumes. Nice painted look look to them. So yeah, uh, that's Ghost Slayer Ayashi. And I'm going to end the video pretty much abruptly here because I have things to do. <laughs> I was just trying to squeeze this in while I could. So yeah, I'm in Blaze. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you very soon for some anime pickups in January. But also some manga stuff as well, finally. We can finally talk about that stuff. And yeah, just stuff to look forward to. I have some art books, which I'm looking forward to showing off soon. So yeah, home base, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Spoil one of them, but whatever. Uh, I picked up no fewer than eight Sentai film work releases. So uh, yeah, let's get to them, shall we?